Okay, Miguel, the floor is yours. You should be able to share anything you want. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. So this is Miguel. I'm from Mexico for the ones that I, uh, don't know me. I'm in Brazil currently. So right now, what we're going to do is to answer some questions, a few questions actually in Mentimer. So I will share the link here and, and then I will display my screen as well. Please let me know if you have access to. And there is this code in case you need to access to, okay? So we prepare a few questions in order to know like uh, what we can actually know for the, uh, what we can do for the next weeks actually, and how we can organize the idea about this hackathon that we are helping to organize. So um, yeah, the, the idea is to answer these questions and then like we can discuss question by question and then see uh, uh, what could be the best for everyone for the hackathon. So yeah, the, the idea is to, to open the discussion and try to, to bring uh, some ideas and try to see what would be the best for, for this hackathon. So are you all are able to see, um, to open the link? Is that correct? You can answer. Yes, all. but we cannot put the code yet. Oh, okay. So I think if you access to the link, I think you are going to directly to the to to the questions. Okay, I see already some likes. That's I think that's yeah, that's an answer. So the first question that we prepared for you guys was uh, this one. So and we would like to know uh, first. Uh, uh, how could you describe the purpose of your organization? So uh, if, if you can answer this question, you can type some answers uh, that could help us to actually see like what we can actually do for the, for the hackathon events. So it would be nice to feel free to answer, uh, to, to, to type your questions and then like we can uh, discuss them a little bit. So we can give uh, a few minutes for now, so probably uh, five minutes and then we can discuss. Uh, I understand that you all uh, belong to different organizations, so you represent different organizations. So I think that would be nice to, to know like what will be uh, the purpose of your organization right now. Perfect, I see there are some questions already. Some so answers coming. Some of yeah. the questions that um, some of the questions that we prepared for you today is for also for us to get to know you better and to understand better what your organization is trying to do and it's doing at the moment. So you will see some questions that are about like your organization, some that are like how you see it in some like in the future or something like it's happening now, like difficulties or something like that. But um what we were thinking with Miguel, as we mentioned in the previous meeting, is that some of our, I think all of these questions will help us to humanize this, uh, the topics, right? So if everyone is like, um, if everyone understands and we are like all reading these and understand what everyone is doing, then it's also nice to, to know which resources we have in the group and which ones we are lacking and, you know. Yeah, also, I don't know, like, uh, most of you were in the last meeting, uh, so we were explaining a little bit about, like, what is, uh, what a hackathon is. So the intention is to actually solve some of the issues that you may have right now in the organization where you are. So, but first, we would like to know, okay, what's the, what's the purpose of my organization, in this case, your organization, and then we can see, okay, uh, what are the challenges which are going to be the following questions and then like we can set uh, a few challenges and then we can see how we can uh, conduct these challenges and then try to see uh, how we can solve with participants from different parts of the world or and regions 
and yeah, and what kind of challenges and people could actually help us for solving these challenges that you may be facing right now. So I already see three questions, which is working on parallel society, uh, uh, citizen, citizen, citizen island. Uh, I don't know if uh, who wrote this answer. Would you like to develop a little bit more about this answer? <coughs> I think it would be really nice to, to hear what, what, what is this question, this answer? Oh, that's, uh, that's me? Yeah. Nice uh, to meet you, Roland. Hi, so Citizens Island has three components. One, the first component is to make a secure place for everyone, an island. And the second part is to uh, provide a UBI by asking multinationals to freely give 5% of their money to our UBI vault, which is a distribution system. And the third part is uh, of Citizens Island is to support and provide a DAO of decentralized autonomous organization. Okay, so, perfect. That's all. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Uh... So probably we can hear the others as well. And then like we can see if like there are some like similar proposals that like the different organizations are have actually. And probably we can see that probably you have like more in common than you may think. And that will be really nice actually. So Let accelerate have, forward. Yeah. Because I see in the chat that Sarat wrote, like I think uh, wrote something, but is it that you, could you uh, get in the link or you want me to paste this in the link, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you do yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Really, yeah. Thank I you. Will. Thank I you. Will. So, accelerate poverty elevation and access to finance. So, yeah, does anyone that's... want to mention something about this? Yeah. Yeah, that's I me. Guess. That's uh, impact markets we uh, decentralized poverty alleviation protocol. So redistributing uh, unconditional basic income to vulnerable community around the world. Uh, just using uh, a smartphone and the access to finance. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Jessica. Um, the next one, which is pilot test implementation of the UEI? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's me. We are developing a kind of ONG where we're gonna, gonna get a credit to buy some computers and to give to young students of rural marginalized communities where they are gonna learn about blockchain and we're gonna teach about proof of humanity and we're going to implement uh, the UBI as an economic systems in, in those communities, in my province, in San Juan, Argentina. Perfect. Thank you very much, Shibo. Uh, Mission Possible 2030, uh, would you like to mention something about what you brought here? Uh, yeah, so this, uh, we, me and uh, Sarath as well, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we've been advocating and researching on basic income for years and years and years, and now the technology is ready to actually implement. So we really, you know, decided to set up an organization where we can actually, by trial and error and learning by doing, see if we can get a community driven basic income uh, to the people. And uh, with a focus on the last mile, because it's easier to, it's already quite easy to get to the people with a smartphone, but um, we will be focusing on the last mile, particularly. Perfect, thank you very much. There is a following question actually about like which category is a fit better for your organization. And it's very important for us to actually focus what we're going to do for the hackathon. So uh, that, that's very interesting as well. Yeah, so Mission Possible, Mission Possible we, we, we are registered in Sweden, but we have a global scope. So we have projects in, in uh, well, more countries. 
that that's great thank you very much is there 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 uh, anyone else who wants to share like uh, what uh, is written here in the in the answers uh, yes the bridging part i forgot to mention the organization so as kotani pay we are helping uh, beneficiaries who do not have smartphones or access to the internet to access the funds that uh, impact market uh, sort of provides mm -hmm. so we are also part on the last mile solution Okay. Hi, Miguel. Um, I'm Hi, I'm from Refugee Integration Organization. Uh, we are also using tools like UBI um, and blockchain backed UBI to um, tend to refugees and migrants specifically. We currently operate in Africa in uh, three countries, uh, Ghana, Uganda, and Kenya. And um, yeah, we, we have, we're bringing a bunch of problems and uh, we hope we can find solutions too. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else who wants to share something? Yeah, so, Miguel, if yeah. nobody else is there, I have uh, written on behalf of Basic Income Earth Network and the India Network for Basic Income. Uh, Hilda and I wear different hats and some hats are together. Uh, with, there are hats which have two heads. <laughs> so Hilda and I are uh, in Mission Possible and Basic Income Earth Network as well. Um, and um, I am the coordinator of uh, India Network for Basic Income. Well, as I said, I think uh, overall uh, our objective and purpose is to uh, stimulate conversation about universal basic income in every country in this world. Uh, that is the mandate of Basic Income Earth Network. And uh, for, to that extent, we are collaborating with different organizations. And um, more specifically, uh, regarding the last mile, which Hilda has already mentioned, I think, um, in fact, Avina just spoke, Avina also, we have been discussing uh, in India, particularly, how we can reach the last man, woman, and child. Uh, one is um, how to reach them at lowest transaction cost. Even the domestic money or the international money, fiat currency, and also cryptocurrency, different forms of currencies. How do we, uh, it is one thing to raise them, it's another thing to actually reach and reach that last person. Maybe with right kind of national identity documents and maybe not. Uh, maybe with a smartphone and maybe not. Maybe many of actually uh, most rural people actually do not have, though the numbers are increasing now. And uh, those who have just a feature phone or even no feature phone, how do we reach them? Uh, I'll give you a small example that uh, if bank account is the most uh, obvious uh, answer people give that open a bank account and don't go and collect. But if the nearest bank is like 10 kilometers and you are getting $10 and you're paying $6 to go and come back and uh, another $2 to have a snack on the way and you are you left with $2. So $10 doesn't become feasible. So that's a, a no, no. So how do you reach, how, how can this man get all the $10? I think the experiment we have done with uh, Kotani Pay and Rio and Impact Market, I think Jessica will say, we have been able to do it with less than 6%. I think that's really, really fantastic uh, experiment. But uh, then uh, MPSA is there and MPSA is not everywhere. Yeah, that's all I close there. Thank you very much, Sarah. Very interesting. I actually work with children as well, and it's very challenging, but it's very interesting as well. So to try to reach them and to, to know like what they need and how we can actually hear them, hear them as well. So that's a real challenge, actually. So, I think that yeah. you will like the last question that we have because you already kind of mentioned, but wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyone else who wants to say something about the, the answer who were here? 
Yeah, hello, my name is Julio. Uh, I am working on the Circles project and I'm also public outreach for the Basic Income Earth Network. Um, the Circles project is, uh, as written there, is looking to provide tools for people to issue their own uh, money, their own promises, so to say, and create a basic income system uh, from the bottom up. Uh, we've been doing that uh, since last year, October, uh, mostly here in Berlin, but we have communities everywhere in the world uh, about, I believe, 100,000 people managed to make an account so far, and we're trying to figure out ways in which to support those communities to organize their own uh, systems. Perfect. Thank you, Julio. So, yeah. Uh, I would say that finally will be the UBI Blockchain Alliance, which everybody here is, is building. So, I, we just, Anna and I just dropped a, um, like, a, let's say, a piece that could be a draft for the mission of everyone here that could be the space be the space of cooperation and collaboration between people organizations and technologies with the mission of ending poverty and we can talk about this later because it's not space for that but this should be a, a draft for our mission uh, yeah of together yeah and i think also something very important from that we can take I, I mean for Miguel and me it's very important this question so we get to understand all of you but also something important is that also you get to understand all of you and from here what you just said Umberto can be the objective of the whole alliance so that's also something great that we can take from this but the, I think we can if there is no one else that wants to say uh, something we can move to the next question because we are also like checking on the time <laughs> Perfect. That, that's fine. Thank you for checking out the time, Nietzsche. Uh, um, <clears throat> so the next question is this one, just to have a, a, a general idea about like in which group you think like you fit better. So please uh, feel free to answer this question. So and with the previous question, I think it, it, it was nice to hear your answers because uh, as probably you, can, you could hear, uh, there are many people, many groups in this call that are facing so many technical and uh, technological uh, challenges that we can actually face. Uh, yeah, we can actually uh, work in the, in, the, in the hackathon and we can try to find a solution for that. So, so that's interesting. So, okay. So give an explanation of the uh, difference between basic income umbrella and the other ones. Sorry, Berto, you asked me to, to do that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so so that we understand that I don't know, maybe UBI blockchain projects is just is not just sorry, is the projects that are working with uh, a blockchain technology behind it for a UBI thing and basic income umbrellas will be, um, I don't know, like gathering or network related, I suppose. Yeah, yeah exactly. So basic income umbrellas is like, um, yeah, this uh, about all the research that is behind or like trying to put together actually this UBA, UBI blockchain projects with reaching the last mile and reaching the last mile will be the institutions or the organization that are actually like the main focus. Of course, the main focus of all of us is to leave no one behind, but that are more working on the field or like are more focused now on the, um, yeah, in, in with society and trying to improve um how to reach them or they are implementing already something and testing and yeah so that would be i would say the difference so uh, i was in doubt about uh, our project ubi vault because it's a ubi blockchain project but it can also be used by other projects to distribute money so therefore i choose uh, ubi vault to be a basic income umbrella Perfect. If you are unsure about like uh, the classification, you can also like mention on the chat like, okay, I don't belong or I belong to the, to more than one uh, categories. So that would be also really helpful. But uh, we understand that most of the organizations actually, uh, even if they are either in basic income umbrellas or UBI blockchain projects, 
uh, are mostly focused as well in reaching the last mile. And probably that's uh, uh, one of the main focus of uh, the challenges that we are currently facing. But of course, like feel free to, 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 to share some comments about that. Either open your microphone or write on the, on the chat as well. Uh, Will be yeah. the uh, proof of humanity is an is on UBI blockchain project, and then uh, the project of Evo is on reaching the last mile, even if it's using the UBI uh, of, of the okay. technology of proof of humanity. And then um, the basic income Earth network is on the basic income umbrella. So just to to have an mm -hmm. example. For me, like these answers is it's like. Re really revealing because yeah like it's like like Miguel was saying all of us want to reach the last mile but then you can see like we are still like some are putting a lot of effort on on research and investigation and trying to to get this like how to couple uh, the blockchain and but also the technologies that are there and I think for me for me at least this is very clear what the hackathon should be focused on or like which would be the question for the hackathon right um, that's great. I think we are we are on the way, so it's 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 cool. I think Miguel, we can move to the next. Can I say something? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Miguel. Uh, okay. Uh, given the existing um, fiat currency, I mean, without disturbing all that, uh, one is also one is trying to find reach the last mile. Okay. Now, then the next disruption comes when the crypto comes into the picture and how to convert crypto. Uh, into the national currency and then ensure that people can use that uh, money. And that at another level, there is also another thing we need to question that if people are the ones who are actually generating value in communities, uh, why is it that the banks and the central banks uh, are the ones who are actually making the money? So, uh, in, I mean, I'm just referring to the complementary currencies and then creating those using the blockchain technology, creating those islands where people's value is not completely um, uh, appropriated by the uh, fiat system, but uh, it's it's kind of retained. The value is retained in the community itself. Uh, I think uh, Julio, my friend, is uh, working on that. He can actually elaborate this point. Uh, there are experiments in Africa which are doing this kind of work. Uh, should we take that also into account in this hackathon? I just question, or would it uh, really enlarge the scope too much? Julio, would you like to add something to this? Julio, Julio may have left. Are you there, Julio? I think he may have left already because he had an appointment. Um... Well, okay. okay. I think this is a very valuable uh, question, um, uh, but maybe it's not necessary anymore to convert cryptocurrencies in local money. When there are groups of people they can just have their own crypto coins and then we can just bypass the banking systems. I think. So, so, so you are talking more about like, for example, uh, the crypto becomes a local currency, for example, and th there is no need to convert this money to the local national money and then to the the money that is going to be used by the by the specific groups that you want to reach? Yes, quickly. Perfect. I think that that's like another very nice question for a hackathon. I don't know if like this <laughs> question would be like very big for one, but I think it's very, it's very interesting. Like if you could put like in the question, you know, like how to make people give a value to UVI and use it as their currency. Because, yeah, like now, now what we need to do, or at least what I think it's missing the most, is that people take UBI as something that is theirs, that they understand, and they are willing to, to, to be part of it. And later, then it would be like, okay, this comes together with this. Um, so, but I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, when, when we, after this, or we will tell you like what's next, and next is like, 
just um, polishing the, um, the challenges, we can talk more about this and decide like, there, there can be maybe three challenges or something. But I think it's great that now it, this, uh, you mentioned this because it's, uh, it's very interesting too. Yeah, and ju just to add on that, uh, really very much agree with uh, Roland on impact market side. I think we all have a different vision on what is the last mile. If it's you know going into fiat or cryptocurrency, for us the last mile is really keeping into cryptocurrency that will reach everybody without having to deal with any banks or local currency that know hyperflation, uh, etc. So, so I think it's interesting question to. To, to raise, I think we have uh, all different vision on, on what it is. Yeah, perfect. Maybe I can add to Sarat that this will be not something which will be achieved tomorrow, but maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that's very interesting. I, I mean, like, I, I mean, these questions are also like kind of like a little bit provocative in order to make you think uh, about like, okay, what's what we have right now, what we want to do, and um, what we want to reach as well. So, I'm not so probably, yeah, I think like there are a few things that I, I, I can see that you, that you share between the different organizations that are interesting for more than one organization and probably is something that we can become that those questions into challenges and it's something that we can uh, take to the hackathon and try to find a solution with like more people that are more involved as well in this kind of like uh, uh, technologies and uh, strategies that you are implementing here so I think like yeah, we, we have we can take them in into consideration as well. Miguel, I think we should move to the next questions. Else. Perfect. Yeah. We'll go to the next one. And this is more about like the positive aspects of your organization. So feel free to, to type uh, the latest achievements of your organization. So which is also nice to hear, not only like the negative aspects, but also what you have done like uh, in a good way that have helped to your organization. So it would be nice to, to hear a little bit more about that and to take advantage of what you have done so far and then like what we, you could do in the future. So uh, it's kind of like the good practices that you have done in your organization. So it would be nice to, to read some of your experiences as well here. Yeah, and this can be like external, external or internal, like any outreach or any internal things that you have improved and then they have also improved other of your processes or of your activities. So or like yeah, any new proposals or any, not, I don't know, like anything that is uh, that the latest achievement for your group. Which have helped to reach your proposed as organization or which have helped to uh, improve your internal organization or yeah, the different aspects that you want to cover. So if like someone's uh, I think Heidi, do you want to mention something about this? And then, like, we can go with the next ones. Um, yeah. So with uh, yeah, I, I, as I'm working for two organizations, so with Mission Possible, uh, well, it was this basic income a blockchain collective that we brought together, uh, all of us, um, um, and um, that we managed uh, together with uh, with Impact Market, Kotani Pay, and uh, and Rio to actually get the money to a whole village. All the adults in the village, uh, including the ones without uh, the phones, and uh, with Bien, I think the most uh, well, the the the, the best achievements, uh, latest achievements were that we signed an MOU with uh, UNDP, and we brought together different uh, UN organizations at the Bien conference uh, last summer, which was uh, uh, well, first time in history. Yeah. 
that they actually talked about basic income on at the at the BM conference. So you already have like a really good practice that you can share with like different organizations that want to do the same, and probably they don't know how to do that. So it is nice to try to visualize. So okay, there is already like one example of how we can actually do that. So that's really cool. Yeah. How to catch attention of these agencies that <laughs> maybe they think they are solving world's problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Pai. Yeah, so, um, so recently announced that we launched in Ghana. Uh, so in Kenya, we are supporting uh, 1,295 refugees uh, collaboration with Impact Market in Rio. We're also supporting another 366 in collaboration with uh, MP and Impact Markets. So as we expand into Ghana, we're also looking to support another community, another three communities, I believe, with Rio and of, and of course, Impact Markets. So we might also be doing the same as we also launch into Zambia and Uganda. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, this I don't know, maybe well, I typed something and I don't know, it has not gotten into the slide. Okay, I will, I will just speak about it. Yeah. yeah sure. um, actually, uh, as I said that, you know, uh, if the bank system is the most, uh, apparently the most obvious pathway, uh, we have gone slightly to the next level of using a payments bank, India Post Payments Bank, which has much larger coverage in the rural areas and uh, with much relatively much lower costs and then no minimum balance required and a very simple procedure to open an account and operate it. Um, so that is at least we have gone to the next level, uh, but, but then there is, there is more remoteness to be reached uh, beyond the, where the post office has been able to reach. So as India Network for Basic Income, that's about what we have been able to achieve lately. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and achievements. So, uh, yep, this, that's, this that's, one. Yeah. yeah, that's Impact Market. So we are turning one year old in, in one week and we distributed 1.2 million to 20 plus K, uh, beneficiaries in 22 country. Uh, so really proud of that. And I think that would have never been possible with uh, the help of Rio and Kotani Pay that have been absolutely instrumental in, in this success. So really proud of that. that that's great. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, the last the last text you pointed, it was mine and I couldn't explain it. The, the, one, the one we said that we become an ONG and we are uh, about to get a subsidy of the government uh, of $50,000 to implement the project I already said about the education of young guys, student guys in the province of San Juan. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, that was Ivo, and then we have like a few more. Is there anyone else who wants to share their answer we have a, a few more actually bye hey okay. um uh this is avina again um some of our uh, achievements recently have been that we have um officially distributed uh around ninety thousand dollars to refugees in uh, ghana and kenya um and a very small community in india we have um we have now a presence in all the refugee camps in Ghana, and uh, we are just starting a six month long uh, UBI impact assessment uh, with refugees in Ghana. So we wanna understand in this time, um, and we have a lot of stakeholders that are present on the call, but we wanna understand what all of our impact and influence has been on the lives of these people. Yeah, that's a great question. If you actually made a difference or not, but I'm for sure, probably yes. 
Yeah, so does anyone else want to share their answer? Otherwise, we can go to the next two last questions. Um, Maybe just a short explanation on, on this UBI yarn votes, just not to leave them there like this. So basically, they are um, a product of proof of humanity that was a, like a layer on yearn finance. And basically what, they're, what they do is that people can uh, lock their ETH, their U stable coins there, and then they generate uh, some interest. Then half of this interest is given back to those who have locked their money inside your finance, and the other half is used to burn UBI. Because since it's a very inflatory um, token, uh, the value goes down a lot. So it's to decrease the supply, we burn it like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it was what uh, we explained in maybe two meetings ago. And yeah, and finally on the UBI blockchain collective, uh, we have a web page that is under construction, but it's publicly available. And I will reach you later by mail, if you allow me, um, to invite you to the web page and ask you some stuff from your organization, information to put it there so that people can access and, and get directly to your, um, yeah, to your links, channels. And the other thing is um, that there is Scott Morris. Scott Morris is an um, token engineer which has developed a framework for mapping wicked problems in a token scope or token token uh, perspective so he offered himself to uh, run um, a frameworks mapping session for us and yeah so we can talk about later but that will be something that we will all benefit by having the map of where are we and how can we collaborate on that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you, Roberto and Anna. So if I may, uh, I will go to the next one, to the next question, uh, which is this one. Uh, which of the following areas organization uh, needs the least and the most. So we, we only put a few categories, but probably you have like more options, uh, more answers, an answers to here. So, uh, but yeah, this is only to have an idea about how we are going to conduct like the, the, the hackathon as well. So where we're going to focus mostly, but yeah, of course it, it would be helpful for for different aspects. Yeah. So if while uh, people are answering, probably like, is there anyone else who wants to, is there anyone who wants to share like why uh, they, they answer that? So, or if there is something that probably we are missing here and um, yeah. So we see that funding is one of the main challenges uh, or needs actually. So does anyone want to share something about that? About why funding and why social trust or partnerships, for example, which are the most relevant here? Yeah, I would uh, like to uh, tell about uh, Impact Investor. That's an investor who is interested in the good for the world. And she advised us uh, first to have 8,000 uh, paid contributors uh, instead of uh, raising money. So that is what we are going to do. And that's for the project Citizens Island, of which UBI Vault, the uh, a distribution system is one part and another part of citizen island as company island is to ask all companies to um, give uh, five percent of their turnover to a ubi so we do not need funding for the moment moment we need partners and contributors thank you yeah okay perfect Thank you, Roland. 
Is there so anyone the, else? For, for the ones that or the ones that um, that uh, mentioned about the partnership, it would be good to know like which kind of partnerships or like you have in mind, like which yeah, like which other organizations or maybe not specific names, but areas that, that they what work. What kind of organizations that, yeah, it would be nice to reach, for example, or do you need? So do you have any comments about that? But the ones who answer uh, partnerships, for example? Uh, well, uh, for uh, Brian, go for it. I will, I will go after it, go. Okay, so for us, I, I see partnerships as a way for us to go into more African countries. And by doing so, then we'll be able to support, say, a bigger sort of base of uh, beneficiaries. On the side of the funding, that may also come in uh, also just to support some of those activities. Uh, but partnerships uh, would take a bigger chunk of that. And also possibly a bit of social uh, acceptance because as you know, crypto has sort of a negative connotation. Uh, so just being able to create more awareness around how crypto can also be good, uh, that will also help. Thank you, Brian. Jessica? Uh, yeah, for us, partnership, definitely. Uh, as mentioned, when we have partner like Kotani Pay, it's really easy for us to enter country and to support beneficiaries. When we do not, um, and we have to reach only people who have smartphone and then find ways to cash out cryptocurrency because not enough people to uh, exchange their crypto together, uh, it makes things really hard for us to enter a new country. We do it, but it's harder. And you need to have uh, to establish a, a lot of trust in what we do, in what you do. So, so yeah, more partnership like Kotani Pay will make our life <laughs> much more easier. Perfect. So if I understood well, uh, if you have like the partnerships, uh, it, it will be a lot easier to reach the last, the, the end users. If you don't, you have to do a lot of more communication uh, uh, stages, ap apply more communication uh, to actually reach the, the end users, right? Uh, not really. It's just, well, if we don't have partner like Kotani Pay that enable us, you know, to reach uh, beneficiary that do not have smartphone, uh, we have to reach only people who have smartphone and then we have to find ways uh, to help them cash out, which in some countries is extremely uh, complicated, such as Burkina Faso, where cryptocurrency is not really uh, Mm. something uh, really common or familiar yet. So, so it just makes things longer and harder. Okay. And, it, I, and I, I guess it also implies like investing a lot more of resources, not only economical, but also like people resources, you know, like, right? Uh, not really, not really. Resources is, is, is fine. It just takes longer uh, to onboard communities. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of more bureaucratic process instead of like being exactly. like more like smooth process. I see. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Also, so, if I can say that yeah. very short, like partnerships, yeah. if we from the perspective of the UBI token, it would really be helpful if like established markets, like, okay, I'm going to say Amazon, it will never happen probably, hopefully one day, yes, that will accept the payment as Roland said, like we don't need to convert these tokens in, in real money, we can use it for payment directly in a token. So this would really help like to have the real use in the real world of the tokens. So partnerships with established websites, courses, marketplaces, whatever it is. That, that's right. So we, we went through pr the purpose of each of, of the organizations, then the achievements, and then the needs. And then like, I, I think the, the last question is kind of the most important question that we would like to know in order to see how we're going to conduct the, the hackathon. And that's going to be this question. Uh, and we want to know what's the most urgent action that your organization needs to take to achieve their short term or long term objectives. So I think that would be really nice in order to, to, to map all these needs and then to see how we can actually go for the, uh, uh, for the organization of the, of the hackathon that uh, hopefully is going to help you to find some, so, some solutions. So, uh, 
Yeah, please feel free to type your questions, uh, to your answers, sorry. Um, yeah, and then like we are going to discuss them a little bit. And then we are going to see if there are some similarities between the, the different answers that we may have. So we can give a few minutes and then like we can discuss them then as well. All right, if you said like, you want to mention something anyway, so that's very welcome. No. <laughs> So uh, yeah, this question is basically to to know like okay, what do we want to solve uh, with the hackathon? Probably not only with the hackathon, but what do we want to solve in the uh, upcoming months, weeks, or uh, years, uh, which will help to reach the objective of your organization. So. We already have after, one question. Yeah. After this, there is it's not a quite well, it's a question, but it's not like a proper answer. It's like a word cloud that it's just like to, to see. I, I'm very interested to see like which word or words are like the high like highlights from all this discussion. But yeah. Yeah. So, that's so we already have like one, two questions, two answers actually. So does anyone uh okay, uh company island? There's Ronald, I think. Do you want to uh, to to mention something about your your answer here? Uh, yes. So, Citizen Island is a platform, and as soon as we have a lot of subscribers, we can make this platform. Huh? And where the company island is the same, except for that companies can show their products on a, the island and citizens can then vote if these uh, products are good. And also on a company island, uh, when a company is uh, supporting UBI fault, then they can show our logo so that citizens and other people will buy from these companies. So, and we have a uh, a couple of meetings where we are going to uh, show citizens islands and how it works. So the first yes. thing, first thing we need is contributors, the subscribers. You can subscribe to citizens island for fifteen euros a month. Okay. That that almost covers the costs. Thank you, Ronald. Hmm? Is there anyone else who wants to mention something about uh, his, her answer here? So we already have like a few more questions, uh, answers. Yeah, Miguel. Um, I mean, uh, it's one thing to wait for governments to implement a basic income policy. It's another thing to uh, use crypto and then where it is possible to transfer. Uh, I'm also thinking, why not we create a very user-friendly, user-friendly app or something where, within the community, within the global human community, the giver who wants to give one dollar on a Friday morning can easily put it in an, in an app, and then somebody on this other side who wants to receive can uh, can we create this kind of a horizontal uh, network through technology where this is seamless and crosses all national boundaries. Yeah. But this is Valora. What are you talking about, sir? This is Valora Digital Wallets. You can send money in a second across border without fees. And it is in, in the, it, it appears in what currency? Uh, Celo dollars. Celo dollars, yeah. Then yeah. it has to be converted, yeah. No, I mean, that's an, sorry to interrupt, but that's an example I wanted to give because I think we're not, we, we're talking about community currency, the use of zero dollars. 
Uh, for us, what we saw at impact market, it depends the amount of people you reach. For example, in Brazil, we almost uh, everywhere in the favela, in Rio de Janeiro, we supporting 20,000 people there. And so the, 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 the most used currency in Brazil, in this favela is cello dollars. People do not cash out anymore. They're not using local currency. They're only, only using cello dollars and Valora digital wallet because exactly for the reason why, 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 why you raised is they can transfer in a second to friends. They can pay in a merchant because merchants started accepting cello dollars. Uh, because they realize there is this amount of people that are uh, having about buying power that didn't have before. And so all the, the, the economy inside the favela in Brazil turned around cello dollars. So this is possible. It just depends on the amount of people you reach. Okay, I think Abina and I have been discussing this Valora. I think, uh, I don't know what uh, issues Abina finds in India. For example, I don't know if you want to go into that, but just, thank you, thank you, Jessica. This is really fantastic. It would be very interesting to know how those favelas um, learned about cello dollars and adopted it and wanted to use that instead of the local currency, because I think that would help. Well, also, this like, is water. this is because they started to be beneficiaries of impact markets, so they had this money in ends that they didn't have any other before. And so they're starting to use that because they realize cashing out, there is there is fees, you have to go through bank, uh, there is hyperinflation, there is, well, money lost. So it's just keeping it the same system, make it easier. But but yeah, happy to discuss. The, Brazil is, I know, is not the same in every country, but it's a beautiful um, case to show that um, crypto can be used as the currency and the last month doesn't necessarily mean that we need to cash out to local currency. Exactly, because I think that's something that would be very, like it's very uh, nice for, to share among the group. Maybe others are, have been thinking about it and and then it's like, how you build trust on that? Like what that was one of the options, right? Like how do you build trust and make people accept? And I think of course, when you you go give, them, give to them and then they start, like working around it and using it and they see that there is a value. And we come back to what uh, I think Saret was saying about like people is the one giving value to the currency. Why is it, has, how, why the system is like becoming the opposite or has become the opposite. So I don't know, I just think it's a very nice, uh, good practice that it could be shared and could be replicated. I absolutely agree as well. But in Rio's experience of um, you know, the last mile, uh, given that many of these communities are in really dire condition, it's, it's, um, it's definitely difficult to stop at uh, last mile being exchanging of silo dollar, but rather digging in deeper to find uh, fiat options. But um, for Rio, the, the most urgent actions uh, that we need to take is just raising funds most uh, of, of all um, for a variety of things, but I've listed it uh, there below. Thank you, Arina, Jessica, and Nese. So very interesting and insightful comments. So yeah, I think definitely there's some, that's something that we can like continue the discussion and see, okay, if, this is a, a, a challenge or this is a good practice that we can share with the different organizations. And uh, yeah, that's something that we, we, we can consider in order to put, okay, what do we want to, to solve, for example, or okay, we have done this already, so, but we, we're still missing something. So probably we can try to solve that, that issues. So that yeah, very interesting actually. So uh, is there anyone else who wants to discuss uh, all these challenges uh, or, or needs actually that you brought here are going to be very useful for us in order, we're going to analyze all of them and try to categorize them probably more uh, than one uh, is like similar to, to the other. And we can see, okay, we have like three general categories and then we are going to present to you and then like, uh, okay, if you agree, we're going to work with those different challenges and try to use these challenges for, 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 the, for the hackathon that we are planning to, 
to 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 organize in the upcoming months as well. So is there any other additional comments about this question? Otherwise, I think yeah, I don't want to take like very long in order to, to show what Nancy is going to present. But I think there is one last question, right, Nancy? Yeah. Okay, it's so. like a proper question. This is like, yeah. this is like, in one word, what would you say is missing to achieve UVI reaching everyone? And yeah, you, I think it gives you the option to write three words actually, but um, it would be nice to see like, which would be the word that comes to your head when you think about this question. So we keep a few minutes to, to receive the answer. And then like we can go to the next steps. Nice, we already have two answers here, fans and love. Perfect understanding of CI. Citizens Island. Okay, okay, perfect. <laughs> Uh, communications, public relations, partnerships, uh, education. So, yeah. So, yeah, we already have like different, different words that represent uh, what you actually are thinking right now that uh, you are missing. I feel like everyone is, is very diverse, this group, because everyone is thinking something totally different. I mean, not totally different between each uh, word, but like a uh, different question, a uh, different word. So adoption, okay. Okay. Uh, UBI projects, collaborations, uh, okay. So perfect. So, okay. Uh, what we're going to do next with this information is what I already say. So we're going to have a look more in detail about what you wrote in the answers. And then we are going to try to make some categories of possible challenges that we can work in the, in the hackathon that we want to organize in the upcoming months. So I think uh, you already provide with a lot of uh, valuable information and that's very, very interesting because uh, I, I could say that Nielsen and myself are getting new in these kind of like topics. We organize hackathons and events like that, but uh, this topic is kind of like new for us, but it's very interesting to know more about what you are thinking and what you are leading as well. So that's very important uh, to have like this general idea about uh, the the purpose of the of your organization, but also the challenges that you are facing right now. So I think that's all for this activity. And I think Nils is going to show uh, what now Nils is going to present uh, what is going to be next. And I think that's that's all from my side. Nils? Yeah, just before we move to that, like there is a timeline that I want to present to you. Is there like, um, does any one of you want to say anything about this? Like, did you get, like what you got from this activity? Was it like helpful or did you realize something that you were not like, that you didn't discuss before? Or do you have it like, um, is it like, um, it, does it already help to kind of know which are the challenges that we may, um, yeah, we may suggest for the hackathon? Like anyone wants to say anything before we move? Um, I think this was a great job. Like, I think we've been talking for a while now and we, we've been hearing about all the different projects, but just seeing it on the screen and being able to read it and to think about it, it was super helpful just to have it in front of us. So really great job for that. That's great. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, uh, how do I pronounce? Miguel. Nilce. Nilce. Ah, Nilce. Nilce. 
One thing is really difficult. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in my work, uh, I I also spend a lot of time in academic discussions and uh, a lot of uh, political discussions. But I think this process was really, really fascinating because it cuts a lot of bullshit and comes to the point. And uh, and also it it really gives um, in a very lucid way what people are contributing and how rich their, their, uh, their thinking has been. It's really fantastic. I think, uh, as uh, Anna was saying, I think it's, this really puts in front of us such a rich and uh, very hopeful and optimistic picture. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Yeah. Truly, thank you very much for this exercise. I'm looking forward to knowing where this goes and uh, what we might arrive at. Thanks, Avina. Um, so yeah, I think this was really important. It was a very important activity for us as well because uh, last meeting we we heard a lot from you as well, but uh, it was like okay, we had so much information, but we really want to see like in a short test, okay, what are the needs that they want to cover. And then like we can kind of map and organize a little bit better because otherwise we just have like so many ideas and then like it's kind of complicated to organize them. But uh, uh, yeah, I think it's very useful for us as well. So. Yeah, yeah. thanks a lot also for uh, participating and actually writing because yeah, we have also done this and some people are like, oh, yes, the objectives again. But yeah, it's sometimes these things that we should have on top of mind. That, so we don't lose track of what we're doing and what's our purpose. So I think it's it's quite good. So also thank thank you to all of you for writing and also like synthesizing the things, uh, which was great actually for reading and for making it a bit more participative. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a bit. Yeah, now it's going to be more on the administrative or <laughs> I don't know how to call it. Um, but can you see my screen now? Because I. Yeah, I cannot see you anymore. But yes. Yeah. Okay. So what we made um, uh, for the like the organization of the hackathon is like uh, in very uh, sum summarized, let's say, because behind this there is a lot of work. But I wanted to show you what uh, how is it that we are usually like we usually work when we are organizing a hackathon. So first we make the proposal presentation, which is what we made last. Um, last meeting which is like we present ourselves like who are we what have we done how we what we think we can contribute to your collective or your alliance your group and which resources do we need if you remember last time we were showing all this and yeah so it i think it worked good so now we are in this stage of kick out stage and the kickout stage is like three main activities one is the challenges and opportunities brainstorming which is what we did today then it's the date of the event definition and the core team definition. And this is what, um, what it's coming next uh, and what, what we will ask for you uh, from you now. It's like, we need to, um, like we need you to start thinking about like when you would think it's a good time for making the event. I mean, if maybe you think this year or next year, it doesn't, uh, it is like, um, it's, it's, it, it will be, um, yeah, good that if, if you have um, a date in mind, you don't have to say it now. I think what we are, we were like talking with Umberto and, and we were thinking with Miguel that uh, maybe you can give us an answer in the next uh, meeting that you have as a collective. And also, so th these are the two important things that we need from you now and from, for the uh, next meeting, which is uh, start thinking about the date of the event. We were also like kind of like thinking on dates. And so we, we were thinking like, December, sometimes people are on holidays and it's like a lot of people, it, I mean, it, it varies a lot in the world, but it's like, it is that month is a bit chaotic. So if we are planning something, maybe it could be November, if you are planning, if you are thinking about this year, if not, maybe then next year. This is important for us, not for the, for the coordination or the planning, because we can plan everything and you know like give it to you as a package it's important for us to know when the for instance um 
our partnerships person is going to start working because we, uh, that person cannot start like making the partnerships, like sending mails, making the calls, making all these meetings if that person doesn't have a, a date on mind and, they, and that person cannot say like, okay, we want this or we need this for this time, right? Because yeah, that has also happened to us that we don't have the date like um, very set. And then the partners are like, yeah, but when do you need? Because I need, like, I don't know, like if we need money or something, they are like, I, I need, I have to make this budget cut on December. So if it goes in that year or in the next year, so it's a lot of other administrative and that kind of stuff. So, but it's very important. And um, yeah, and also the, the core team, the core team, what we need from you is the, as we said last time, is the person or, or people from your organization that will commit to the, um, uh, to the organization of the hackathon in terms of like when we need anything from you we know who to contact and if we are going to make these meetings like maybe uh, one uh, week like a weekly weekly meeting is that that person is uh, representing your organization so um also the ideas from your organization from your purpose is all the time there during the planning process of the hackathon then it comes the development stage which is when we do the challenges uh, development. That's what Miguel and me are going to work. And we're going to be analyzing all the discussion. We will check back the video. We will check on your answers and try to make categories and kind of um, questions or topics for the, for the challenges. And then with the core team that you define for us, um, we will be defining, like making it better and maybe just choosing one, two or three, it, it depends how we want to, to do this. It, that, that we work with the team like us and the team you, um, the people you define for the hackathon. Then we, that this is um, like more on, yeah, on the thinking on how the event is going to look. So we need to check on the participation's profile, the technical support we need, the internal external communications, and then these last two stages are the hackathon themselves. So in the day of the event, if it's a three-day event, how do we want the prototypes to look like? And um, then the evaluation, the winning, the prize, all these things that we were also telling you, if we are going to, if we are going to make it hybrid, if we're going to make it uh, just online, then which resources we have, what kind, when we define the, um, what kind of audience or we, we are like more looking forward to have, then it's like, if we are looking for young people, then we contact the um, universities and then we have to manage uh, with the universities to give them the space for that, or those three days to give them the resources or if we can provide all, all these things. Um, yeah, and then uh, after that, there is this event feedback where, where you and us have this feedback conversation on what went good, what didn't go so good, how we can improve because I think, um, I mean, we have to define also, and that's something that it's in the, maybe the during the challenges in this development stage is um, where, like, if it's going to be like a worldwide thing or we want to focus in a region or in a country. And then with this feedback event, uh, what we do is like, okay, we are thinking about replicating this. So what, how we can do this easier or like more effective, or maybe if it all goes good, then it's like, okay, we just need to change or modify this or that. Um, but yeah, this is uh, more or less um, the action plan that we have designed for this hackathon or like, yeah, for the hackathon. Um, so what I need from you, like your homework, let's say, what I need from you is these two right now. This is where we are now in the kickoff stage so that the, the, uh, to have a date, um, in mind and the core, like the team from your side that would be helping us. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any comments or any questions. Do you do you want us to give you the answers now for? for no, next I. Time? I think um, what I think this is just like you to have in mind for the next meeting. Yeah. You can tell us this is the people from our organization. I think next meeting it's in one two weeks from your yours. Yeah, we, we, we still have to plan it, but I think we should do it in at least two weeks. Yeah, exactly. So then at least you have two weeks to maybe to go back to your team, check on a date, uh, on a date, check uh, who has the time, who, is, who wants to volunteer and, and that. So I think um, it's great if in next, this next meeting, two weeks, you can have these answers for us. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, from them, from there, we start um, with the core team uh, work. And of course, next, also next meeting, we will show to you the outcomes of this. So what we were saying, like this first part, the challenges development, the first part that Miguel and, and I do. So the analysis of all this and the proposed topics or areas that we can work on. Um, and yeah, from there, we start uh, fully with all, all this hackathon and everything else that has to be yeah, done. <laughs> Okay, cool. So really, thank you very much, uh, Niels here. So really, um, and Miguel, really, really productive, uh, productive uh, meeting uh, today. And um, yeah, I think I, I'm, uh, you, you, you will be there in the two weeks time then to, to listen to our answers and guide us uh, further to the next uh, stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so that will be on the same time. Uh, as today, like uh, 2.30 European time, I don't know whatever time it is at your place, but uh, wherever you are. <laughs> um, anyone else who wants to give comments or questions or... No, but I think... I just have a small uh, observation, uh, Hilda. Uh, what he'll say, say, one of the things I think uh, was about whether it should be global or it should be regional or focus of this hackathon. Uh, I think uh, in this group, um, we have a wide variety of stakeholders, people who are working at a um, global level like uh, Jessica Impact Market and uh, uh, Kotanipe, I don't know if they are just in um, uh, Africa. Um, uh, I think uh, there can be, instead of uh, the, any specific region, probably we, we have to think of different layers uh, of uh, scope uh, in, the, uh, in this hackathon. Uh, I just wanted to say that because if it is regional, I was also wondering that, see if it is, if, for example, if uh, somebody has to, a group has to work on India, then uh, how, how, who is going to give all the information to those who are going to work on solutions? I think all those questions we can come to that later. Uh, I would, uh, I just, my, I just wanted to say that uh, maybe the scope we let us leave it open uh, so that everybody participates. I would like everybody to participate. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, it could be a good idea to start global, global with a global scope, and then focus more on the, on regional uh, specific uh, context, for example. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Let's all think about that and um, come with your uh, answers next uh, next time. Um, I would like to say one thing, just to consider it not for this next meeting, but for the next one after this one, is about the mapping session, so that we can put it in the agenda um, and hold that session for the whole for mapping the whole ecosystem because it will take around one hour and a half for this session of mapping. And this will allow us to understand where are we and what we can offer and what do we need so that we can have this and constantly update it and, and be something that the people that come or the organizations that come, they can constantly feed it. And we can find the uh, potential solutions that we have not seen and that might be in front of our, our eyes. And also to not create more wicked problems with our own solutions. So that's why it's very important to do this. Um, and one, and I will repeat it, I will contact you privately by mail to show you the website and to ask you certain information so that uh, we can access uh, this, this website and, and have it as a central place, as well as Discord, so that we can constantly communicate and not just wait for the, the monthly meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, um, you know, one more question, Nilsia and uh, Miguel. How much time do you need in a uh, next meeting? Is that a full meeting that you will need, or do we need to have other topics to put on the agenda? No, I I think it's, if it's a point in the agenda, we will maybe 15 minutes we can because it's because we don't know if in that uh, that meeting, maybe more people will be that are not that didn't participate today. So it's not that we're going to explain everything against just like the results, because after that, there will be the, the weekly discussion with your with the core team from like your people and our people. And there is where we are going to be like having like deeper discussions on this. So 
Okay. Yeah, it's just like, uh, yeah, 15. But I, I, I was going to ask you, Hilde, it would be great if you just kind, when you send the mail that you always send with the next meeting details, if you can remind everyone like to think about the date of the event and the core for the ones that participated yeah. today. Yeah, I will. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. Summarize the homework. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So then, uh, then we come to uh, the agenda for next time. Then, uh, because we take it two weeks just to keep to keep this moving forward, and then after that we will uh, we will go back to uh, once a month. Um, so, any suggestions for uh, next next time's agenda? Anyone? I can't see you, but so you just have to shout. Because one of one of the one of the uh, uh, things we were going to discuss was the topic around farmers. I don't know if that is still um, something that we want to be discussing in this collective meeting. I think uh, Sarath and Ria, you were the ones who were really keen on that topic. I mean, if you want to discuss those topics in the next meeting, uh, fine. I think uh, we can have an internal discussion and then maybe, uh, I mean, uh, but I think next meeting, uh, next, uh, within, after two weeks, what uh, Hilsa was proposing is that they will come out with their findings or observations from this discussion. And then we propose the core team member, the dates and potential date and the scope of the Hackathon. I think that's the agenda for the next week. That's how I understood. Am I right, Hilsa? I think Nilsa just said that she only needed 15 minutes, but yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, we don't really need like a whole hour. We just need like okay, a few like uh, minutes from the meeting. So uh, the, thing is that, the thing is that we understand that next meeting is like their monthly meeting, so not like. Uh, hackathon focused one so because if your monthly meeting then you probably have other topics to to talk about and we will just get like 15 minutes to give the results of this and then after that meeting when we know the core team it's the team we are going to be working each week and to to keep elaborating and and building the hackathon structure yeah yeah well, I do say I think I do think it might be a good idea actually to use that meeting uh, to do a sort of like brainstorming content-wise about the hackathon. Yeah. I don't know what the others are thinking about that, but anyone? Uh, we would like to present maybe in the next meeting the visuals for um, the UBI Blockchain Alliance. So let's say the colors that we will use, and all, everything design related. So we have like um, a nice design and, and this, since we have also the, the website now, so we have to decide. Yeah, Hilde, could you send us the logo that uh, you drafted, that you got drafted from the UBI Blockchain Collective? Yeah. So that we can work around it. And uh, yeah, and if we have the time, then we uh, would we'll like to present the website to show it, the Discord, to get everyone on board there to make a quick um, yeah, walkthrough of how does Discord work so that we can get into it. And yes, and that's, that's it. Will be 20 minutes, Max. Umberto, can you share uh, the link in the chat box of the website? Sure. Yeah, so then we do uh, 50 minutes hackathon homework and then uh, half an hour maybe brainstorming about the, the content yeah. and then uh, the website visuals, uh, UBI Blockchain Alliance and whatever comes up, um, you can uh, yeah. tell me then. Yeah. Okay, great. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you, Miguel, and such an uh, efficient program. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. Oh, look here.